Barry got back to his feet inside the Bright Falls General Store and dusted himself off. Right next to the cans of baked beans was a locked case filled with flare guns, and yet here was a conveniently placed barrel of crowbars. Barry's smile widened as he realized that this was the classic movie scene where the hero had to gear up and arm himself to the teeth. Barry threw himself into the role. The story I had written in the cabin had come true. Touched by the dark presence, I had written a horror story, but the end was still missing. The story was incomplete and the last unfinished page of the manuscript still sat in the typewriter in the cabin study. If I could get back there, if I could read the page, then I could write my own ending to this story and save Alice. Sarah was almost starting to relax. Maybe they could turn this into a win yet. Suddenly, there was a piercing sound, like a table saw gone wild, as a hundred birds made out of shadows swarmed into the rotor. The chopper bucked wildly and the board lit up, telling her what she already knew. They were going down. Barry Wheeler screamed next to her. Thomas Zane knew he had to remove all that had made this horror possible, including himself. That was the only way to banish the dark presence he had unleashed and now looked at him through the eyes of his dead love. But he also knew that despite his best efforts, it might someday return. So even as he wrote himself and his work out of existence, he added a loophole as insurance, an exception to the rule. Anything of his stored in a shoebox would remain. Making her way through the water pipe alone, Cynthia was angry at the writer, foolish young man, taking unnecessary risks, and the way he broke the rules. Didn't he understand what was at stake? Since the terrible days in the 70s, she hadn't wavered once, as hard as it had been. She was tired of protecting the town all these long years, and now only wanted to rest. The Poet and the Muse, lyrics by Old Gods of Asgard, the chorus. And now to see your love set free, you will need the witch's cabin key. Find the Lady of the Light, gone mad with the night. Find the Lady of the Light, still raving in the night. That's how you reshape destiny. Children of the Elder God Lyrics by Old Gods of Asgard The first verse and chorus Warriors, torchbearers, come redeem our dreams. Shine a light upon this night of otherworldly fiends. Odin's might be your guide, divorce you from the same. Hammer's way will have its say, rise up in their name. O memory and thought, jet black and clawed, children of the elder god, scourge of light upon the dark. Children of the elder god lyrics by old gods of Asgard, the second verse and chorus. Scratching hag, you can rake your claws and gnash your crooked teeth. You've taken slaves like ocean waves, now feel the ocean seethe. Father Tor bless the war between the dark and light. In their songs, let their wrongs bring disillusion's night. O oh, memory and thought, jet black and clawed, children of the elder god, scourge of light upon the dark. The dark presence was no longer trying to capture the writer so he could create the ending it wanted. The writer knew too much. He was too strong. And he carried a weapon left behind by Thomas Zane, something that could hurt it. Now... The darkness was doing everything in its power to simply stop the writer from ever reaching Cauldron Lake and the dark place it came from. The bottom of Cauldron Lake was a graveyard of things the lake had claimed in one way or another over the decades. The dark presence brought them up in its wake, scattering the rotten waterlogged hull of an old boat here, the remains of a long-ago crashed airplane there, trees shattered under the impacts, the earth groaned, it didn't even notice. Zane cut its heart out, but it didn't die. The thing that wore Barbara's face kept crooning sweet nothings sugar-laced with poison. He put on the suit, untied the monster from the chair. The thing in his arms thrashed weakly, but he held fast. He stepped outside, off the pier, and into the dark water, a sinking pinprick of light descending toward a bottom that never came. The dark place I found myself in was unlike anything I could ever have imagined. It wasn't solid. It flowed. It was conceptual and subjective. For someone else, an artist in another field, it would have been very different. I could sense the story of the manuscript all around me, the words and ideas floating in the air, poised to become real. After Zane had gone, I stood alone in the shifting dream that was the dark place. I had to find a way to the cabin. 
I'd written myself away through this place in the manuscript. I followed the idea of a path. I'd written myself across the ocean that blocked my way, and with that, there was a bridge to the island beyond. The idea of the cabin flickered in the underwater darkness. I willed the cabin to be real, and it was. The Poet and the Muse, lyrics by Old Gods of Asgard, the first verse. There's an old tale wrought with mystery of Tom the Poet and his muse, and a magic lake which gave a life to the words the poet used. Now the muse she was his happiness, and he rhymed about her grace, and told her stories of treasures deep beneath the blackened waves, till in the stillness of one dawn, still in its misty crown, the muse she went down to the lake, and in the waves she drowned. The Poet and the Muse, lyrics by Old Gods of Asgard, the second verse. The poet came down to the lake to call out to his dear. When there was no answer, he was overcome with fear. He searched in vain for his treasure lost, and too soon the night would fall. Only his own echo would wail back at his call. And when he swore to bring back his love by stories he'd create, nightmares shifted in their sleep in the darkness of the lake. The Poet and the Muse, lyrics by Old Gods of Asgard, the third verse. In the dead of night she came to him with darkness in her eyes, wearing a morning gown, sweet words as her disguise. He took her in without a word, for he saw his grave mistake, and vowed them both the silence deep beneath the lake. Now, if it's real or just a dream, one mystery remains, for it is said on moonless nights they may still haunt this place. In the end, Barry wasn't going to shoot Sarah. They both knew that. Once she had no chance of catching up to Wake, Barry gave up the gun and sat down on the floor, shielding his face from the merciless glare of the well-lit room. I don't think I'm ever going to see him again, he said in a weak voice. Sarah didn't have it in her to be mad at him. Besides, he was probably right. I'd first heard the poem in a dream, recited by a strange UFO-like light. I'd read it again in a cabin in a book by Thomas Zane. For he did not know that beyond the lake he called home lies a deeper, darker ocean green, where waves are both wilder and more serene. To its ports I've been. To its ports I've been.